when someone is trying to push you to a certain direction, they don't hate you. They probably are seeing potential. They are probably informed by something that you can actually do better. So tonight when I ask you to introduce yourself in exactly one minute, I'm not trying to hate you. I'm giving you a chance to practice your elevator pitch. How is that? Because tomorrow you might be in, in Mara building and you're stuck with the CEO of a guy that you've, um, of a company that you've been wanting to get in touch with. You might be with our guest tonight. And then you're wondering, how do I tell him that I need that job? I mean, he has a deal. How do I tell him that that deal suits me best? But because you didn't practice the one minute pitch, what happens? You bite your tongue several times and the best you can do is spit it. We don't want you spitting your tongue tonight. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Toes and knees, toes and knees. <laughs> Why is it that I've told you what to do but you keep doing the wrong thing? Stories of Significance is a platform where we believe we as Africa, we as Kenyans, we need to sit down and listen to one another. We go through a lot of things, others complain, but others choose the path of working hard, committing to their passion, committing to their work, and do something for themselves, for their family, and for the community at large. And that is something we don't have today, talk of actually urbanization. And this is where Stories of Significance, we bring our heroes to come and share their stories with us. My name is Dan Mugambi. Others call me Danshon Mugambi. I am a family man, married. I have two daughters. One wife, basically, <laughs> for now, sorry. <laughs> One wife and uh, two daughters, Smiley Mudoni Mugambi and uh, Lilani Nduta Mugambi. Nduta is two, stunning one month tomorrow. Um, that's the reason why my wife couldn't come and then uh, she is taking care of the young one. Her name is Stephanie Wamboy Mwangi, my lovely wife. I run a company called Donkeys Arts and Creations Limited. We make space livable, existable, if there's such a word, madam. <laughs> Basically, we take any space and convert it into a functional space. I am an interior designer, yes. I studied architecture, but majored in design. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, um, I've gone through several uh, entrepreneurial journeys, uh, different trainers and different organizations. I've gone through people like Tony Lumelu. I've gone through um, things like KCB Lions Den. I've gone through several other stuff that uh, have basically uh, sharpened uh, my journey in design and uh, basically in uh, entrepreneurship. I am a painter. I am a fine artist. That is where everything began. I believe there is nothing worthwhile in life than taking risks. It's mediocre for us human beings to live beyond, below what you are capable of. When we push ourselves more than our limits, we can achieve much more than we think. And by the, say, but by the time I'm saying we think, it's because unfortunately most of us craft ourselves around our problems. And we are forced by circumstances to think that there is nothing else that can come out of me that is good. Apart from waking up and sleeping and eating, especially when you're not even finding the food, you don't feel as if there is nothing, anything else that you, are, you, 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 you have ability to push beyond limit. One of the things that I usually do most, almost every day when I wake up, just, I pray, that's for sure. However, I usually ask myself, if today was my last day, how will I leave it? Will I leave it like I'm planning to do today? So if my answer is no, then I change my direction. And um, that has pushed me for so long. There are many days that I'm solo, by the way, there are many days that I'm so discouraged. There are many days that I am extremely um, in a verge of giving up, thinking that this is too much for me. But somehow, um, the fact that 
I can't commit suicide. <laughs> I have another opportunity to leave. And then my phone rings, responsibilities again. <laughs> and then you realize the cycle goes on and on and on. We have learned to embrace failure. Failure is like my second name. I failed more than anyone else I know. I failed in things that I never thought I would fail. However, I have found to I found a system basically of looking for what is good that has come out of that failure. Not everything is negative in any in, 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 in failure experience. I have I always find something to learn about in every situation that does not go right. Even if it's, mention it, sometimes you do business deals that go wrong. Sometimes you get, um, you, you get committed in projects whereby a client promises so much, you do a lot of input in your time and money, then to come to realize that all this is not even paying. Uh, we've had projects whereby a client will not, will actually do a ride with you the whole time and then they decide uh, they're not going to pick your calls after they deliver. I've learned to take every positive moment out of those things that worked in my journey. I was born by one Margaret Muthoni. I have, she is the only parent I knew for the longest. I grew up with my grandmother in a place called Chuka. Um, I came to Mombasa around 1997. I had gone through primary school uh, in Shags for the longest. For the longest. Uh, <laughs> life there is, <laughs> life there is just, uh, well, yeah. Um, then I came here to visit once, actually went back, came again now to when my grandmother was doing, not doing very well in her health. So I came to stay with my mother. Uh, I found a family here. My mother had, was living with um, my father and uh, I joined them. I got into class seven here. I finished, actually I repeated because I, 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 was, I, ca I came from class eight on the other side. I came here, I repeated class seven and then I did class seven and eight. Um, sometime before KCPE, we were kicked out by my father. The first day was rehearsals, so I slept with in, in one of my vigilators' houses. The second day, I, mom didn't show up again, still got refuge, a place to stay. So I did my exams very well, very well, basically. <laughs> um, after three days, after that, actually the third day she came, she's a teacher, so she had obligations on the other side because also she was invigilating somewhere else way a far distance. So by the time, by the time she used to come to pick me up, uh, she used to find that we already gone. So I, I cleared high primary school very well. I passed very well. I got a calling to a good national school. Um, did one year. Then we couldn't afford uh, school fees. Uh, came back to Mombasa. Stayed for two terms without going to school. Started, now I had to get a local school here. I go to a school called Sacred Art High School. And that's where my journey began because that's where I began at. One afternoon I uh, was doing some presentation on the, on the board. I was, I was drawing for, for, for guys, jembes, because I was doing agriculture. So I'm gonna chora jembes and all those things. Then guys were copying on the other side. It happened to be my, the art teacher's day to be on duty. And after the lesson, she called me to her office and she told me, from today henceforth, you are not a student. <laughs> so I had to change. I had to start doing f French, basically, because of the combinations. And then um, I did art for, till actually I cleared high school. During my journey in art, I learned uh, to do screen printing. I started a business in high school uh, for printing t-shirts. I was printing for my fellow student, selling to them. Basically, initially when I was began, beginning, I used to get the money from the, the students. You give me your money, I print for you the t-shirt. I buy the t-shirt with, with your money, you print for you, I give you, you pay me the difference, the balance. Then the business grew, I started making t-shirts for the school. And then I started getting t-shirt orders now for other schools and within the clubs and all that. Uh, help sustain us. Then, uh, because my, when I was in high school, my life was quite a crumble. We were not even affording 
giving me money for lunch sometimes. I used to survive with around 10 shillings uh, for a day. And then in the evening I had to walk all the way to uh, home. The morning, Badoni is a story. By form three, I got a bike, uh, I bought a bike uh, using some of the proceeds I had made. I was, now my brother was, had joined school at St. Augustine, so I used to drive, to, to ride all the way from Tononoka, where we were living, where I had gotten a house, uh, all the way through Chuda, St. Augustine, I drop him, then I go to Sakradat through uh, this side of, um, of the uh, railways. Then um, after high school, um, I, my business was done because my clients were students, so I don't have students anymore, so I had to begin afresh. So then my mom proposed that I go to do uh, teaching, of which I refused. I didn't want to do teaching. I won, number one, it was miserable. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking you're already struggling in life, why do you want me to join you? <laughs> Not in a bad way, but that's true. You know, if your earnings are not the best, why do you want me to join you and struggle together? Um, then I also had found something to love. You know, there's something I was hibernating from, hibernating to when I was so stressed. The, the days I think about life being unfair, I found love. I fell in love with art. And art, art gave me a refuge. I, I, I actually did so much in art more than I did, I've done anything in anything in any other area in, in my life, basically, even in love, I think. I started printing t-shirts in high school, in, no, sorry, in um, now selling to church members. I, I, I could infuse a bit of art in them now and then with a message. And it became popular. The same guys, when they went to, uh, to their, come back, back to their campuses, they, came, they marketed me, they actually, those clubs, and everyone there was actually being blown away by some of the things we were doing, I was doing then. Um, I know you might, you must be thinking why I'm not mentioning me going to the university. I passed very well. I was called uh, to go do architecture in University of Nairobi. And um, unfortunately, that was the end of my education uh, of, with what we could afford. So it was very hard. Well, you think guys that have been your, your age mates are going to school, coming to tell you stories of how their first year was, how they formed click, how they are, you know, one of the other stories are, um, and, and my queue, by the way, like that high school was a day school there, so I didn't experience a lot of boarding life. Um, so I didn't have a lot of stories to tell from high school then. These other guys are going and they're coming to tell me about their campus life, cliques, oh my damn, you know, any, any freedom. You know, high school is a whole different, uh, in, in, in comparison to university. And yeah, me, yeah, I just sit and listen and wait for their orders because I don't really, <laughs> I don't have really anything to, to talk about. So if you remember around 2007, 2008, celebrities used to put on our Imbaji Sana Sana, they used to put on t-shirts with Yasura, Uso Mkubwa, with a palm here. See, that used to be my work. And I pushed it, I pushed it. I did with Akina Juakali. I mentioned everyone, Mwana Efe, Professor Jai met, I met all those guys, Red Sands and blah, blah, I did their clothes lines, Giuliani, almost everyone basically. But that is not what I wanted to do. Deep down I knew this is not my, my, my this is not going to be my tire, my, 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 my place in, in my future. Um, I was investing in design. So I, I went through a series of reinventing myself. I started doing weddings at some point, decorations. I started doing, um, uh, I, I, I started doing anything that will give me money, um, basically to survive. Because also, it was hand to mouth, and we were somehow getting in in good terms with my mom. So I also used to help a lot. I had a responsibility of taking my brother to school. I saw even in our non communication, I still used to pay for his school fees. So I enrolled myself in free online classes for design. And I did interior design in free courses. Then later, I was in a position to afford, go do formal education. So the biggest challenge to do when, when schooling online is because it is that you do not get a lot of opportunities to go hands-on. So most of the things that you learn are theory. But again, you see, that is the only platform I could afford because the best thing about it is it was flexible. I would pay for hours. Basically, you buy hours, you get the materials and everything. Then if you finish your hours, then they calculate them in, in terms of now how much you've gotten through school. 
So you see, the best thing about it is one, I could I could arrange myself, know which day I will spend in a cyber for how many hours, uh, do the number of hours that I'm, I'm I'm supposed to do for the next stage. And year one went well, year two went well. I did and I finished. And after I finished, uh, uh, now I, I actually focused majorly on interior design because I found architecture I was supposed to go for five years. I couldn't afford it for going for five years. And I was paying in dollars. Then I needed a t-shirt to divert and take this other side. So I decided to settle there because uh, that is exactly what um, I really love design, but I would wish I could have gone way further and, and complete entirely architecture, but I couldn't. Um, I had a passion for, for business, apart from just being an artist. I found a way of connecting talent and business, which is one of the biggest problems that many guys have. Uh, that's the reason why most musicians have, 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 uh, have managers, because now the manager is a business part of the, of the, of the, of the career. So I, God worked in a certain way in my life to a point that I was in a position to connect the two very well. I enrolled myself in most many small, easy, 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 easy courses, uh, entrepreneurship trainings. But no matter small, I was, I was actually trained by an organization called EPTF in around 2007. With I was trained actually, we were the lowest grade in terms of training because they trained different people. But now they came to train us carpenters, <laughs> artists. I was I was there. So that is one of the places that actually gave me uh, the drive to do business right. So I was extremely focused in the way I do my bookkeeping, in the way I do my vision planning. And then by the time I got an opportunity to apply for Tony Lumelu Entrepreneurship, which was in 2014 when we applied, uh, then uh, the, it was the first year they wanted 1,000 African, uh, African entrepreneurs 98,000 people applied. They only wanted 1,000. And I thank God that I was amongst the 1,000. We qualified. Um, went to Lagos for, it was a quite a, 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 we actually did online classes for six months, then went to Lagos for a boot camp, which we finished, came back, got something called, um, we call, you um, know uh, they called it a seed capital of half a million, which is $5,000. And then another $5,000 was supposed to come as a loan. I didn't take that one. Then uh, the day came that I'd say today I'm leaving printing. And I left printing. And there was a void, and not necessarily in my heart, but in my pocket. Because I was not making money anymore. The people who were calling me were calling me, but I was a rejected business because I didn't want diversions. The reason why I quit t-shirts is not because I didn't like t-shirts. I really actually love t-shirts up to today. I make my own t-shirts most of the time when I get time. But I quit t-shirts because I realized um, this business is going to make me a middle class person. Now, not in a bad way, but I was not finding a way to be creative enough to make this business how this business will make me a millionaire one day. I was not seeing it happen. Then the other thing, the other reason why I quit t-shirts was because I also wanted to do design passionately. And t-shirts was, was a diversion, I would say. It was something that was really distracting my, 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 my future. And um, when I quit it, I struggled basically because that was the business I knew. As you know, my first business when I, which I started and now it's almost seven, eight years later I'm quitting it. And the other business I'm hibernating to, Sina Wateja Bado. So I made my office Java. At, sorry, I made my office at, uh, I actually got a space at Java. I rented a space for, for a cup of coffee a day. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, I would make friends with most of the waiters so they would not harass me. So most of the clients, when they were asking me to meet, I used to insist we meet in Java because my office is being renovated. And uh, I didn't have an office in Yali. I was telling people I have an office in Yali. 
and um, I believed one day I'll have an office in Nyali because I couldn't afford, of course. And even getting a space that was um, within my, you know, Tronoka was paying 2,000 shillings, which at some point I was struggling. So I'm uh, wondering, most of the places here in Nyali, you find rent being so high. So, um, and basically, life started making sense somehow. I got the first deal that went to the second one, and most of the time I used to prove myself. Actually, I remember there's some work I did, more, actually went way more than the budget just to make the client, as in just to impress pictures and the client. And that project sold to another party, another party, another party. I've never done a billboard because I believe good work sells you more than any other thing. That is testimony, basically. A, t a good testimony will, will take you more, way more, more, f way, way further than even that advertisement you may do. Now, design started making sense. Um, of course, there has been struggles here and there. A lot of them. And especially structuring a company, trying to make, you know, I am, I am this person who has, who has never been employed by anyone. And I don't know how systems run. I didn't even know how to bank my first check. I didn't, I, I, some of the most basic things, you know, the first time I was given a check, I actually took it to the client, the same person who gave it to me. So I was, I can use a mono I thought like I was supposed to stay with it for four days, then I bring I return it, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I was told checks mature in four days. So I went, took it, <laughs> stayed with it for four days, then I take it back. But you told me, no, you need to take it to your bank. Then you have a bank account, you know. And, you know, like, okay, that, that was then. Um, it's not been easy. It's been a very turbulent journey. I finished school. I started again and again. I started again and again and again. I actually finished doing the formal school. I started doing the announced studying segments, like kitchen designing only for months. I studied color alone for like seven, eight months. I major on another thing for like so long. When I stand in front of a client and I am talking about my game, when the client had a notion to challenge me, they keep quiet because I know it on my fingertips. I have pushed myself beyond what I can think. I try to find solutions for every problem that people have, not necessarily myself. I have found a way of putting my business around problem-centric, not a solution-centric business, whereby I get to solve problems that exist, not necessarily to bring M-Pesa and everyone has M-Pesa. I have found a way of working together with failure. Because failure is my best friend today. Failure is the one that has given me the courage to belong. For you to become this person that you want to become, it's not enough to listen to Les Brown and be inspired by those guys up there, Apple and blah, blah. Do it yourself. Inspire people. Make a difference in everything that you touch to a point that people thinking about that thing, they always think about you. Today, when you're getting into a matatu, to Nyali, when you say shukisha dankiz, utashukishwa dankiz. They don't know me in person, but it's become a stage. That is the mark that I want to live in this life. I usually say the day I'll stand before God, I will not be ashamed because I will have no little talent left in me. I will have given everything to serve mankind. I will have given everything to serve clients, even if it's for money, to a point that si vuti chochote. Of course, there are those businesses you don't feel, you feel they're not worth your time. Not in a bad way. Because there is always something for someone again. You also need to realize that. If you take everything, if you go eating nyama no kule mifupa, mbo wa nini? Not in a bad way, but that's the truth of life. When there are other people down here who are trying to grow like, like you, don't take all the opportunities big and small. Give other people time to also blossom. However, in your doing, in your, in your everything that, in your endeavors and everything that you're going to do, make sure that you build a value that people cannot resist. When I stood before the lions or the lions then, I was confident enough that whatever they are going to offer me, I'm going to discuss with them. Not necessarily go for whatever they, are, they, they give me. 
And when the opportunity came, the, the person who was interested in my pitch was asking me something that was not, I felt was either demeaning me or make me his servant or their employer, employee, sorry. And I turned it down. Basically because, not because I really did not want that money, but because I knew my value. I had built a certain value so highly, even within myself in terms of thinking, to a point that I was not willing for any human being to turn me down. Anyone who was putting me down, was putting me down at the end of the day. The reason why I'm talking about value is because many people think value, money is value. Money has no value at all. You make value such that money can buy that value. Maybe speaking about discouragements, you'll find people will discourage you. Family is part of it. Friends are part of it. Learn to forgive after that because you can't live as an island. Learn to work, do business in your mind, not your heart. You'll find even to today, as sharp in business as I'm trying to become, I still have people who refuse to pay me with all the systems that we have and contracts that we have. So there is always an experience for every day that comes. We are not the best, I'm not the best. There is always someone who is better than another person. However, I want to be the best in myself. I wish you well, work hard, and let's meet at the top. Thank you.